So this will be the second video on the series on endocrinology. Make sure to watch the first video in this series in which we discussed about the overview of the human endocrine system. We talked about the type of the receptors, the types of hormones. We also discussed in brief about some of the important endocrine organs like the thyroid, parathyroid and the adrenal glands. Now the next important organ to discuss in the human endocrine system is the pancreas. The pancreas consists of a both endocrine and an exocrine part. The exocrine part of the pancreas secretes important digestive enzymes into the duodenum, whereas the endocrine part of the pancreas secretes two important hormones, the insulin and the glucagon. They also secrete somatostatin which is of lesser importance. Pancreatic islets, also known as the islets of Langerhans, are irregularly shaped patches of endocrine tissue that are present in the tail of pancreas that contain different types of cells like the alpha cells, beta cells and the delta cells. Out of these, the alpha cells secrete glucagon, the beta cells secrete insulin, whereas the delta cells produce another hormone, the somatostatin. Now, insulin has a wide range of effects on metabolisms of glucose, other carbohydrates, proteins as well as fats. Whenever we eat, there is a rise in the blood glucose concentration, which is detected by the pancreas causing the release of insulin. The overall effect of insulin is to decrease the concentration of glucose in the blood by stimulating the uptake of glucose into the cells and also by the conversion of glucose into glycogen, which is the storage form in the liver. It is known as anabolic hormone which is just opposite of catabolic since it prevents the breakdown of both fats, proteins in the body. Glucagon on the other hand works just opposite to that of insulin. See the hormone glucagon is mainly released when glucose is gone from the body meaning a low concentration of glucose in the blood. The glucose causes breakdown of glycogen to glucose in the liver which is known as glycogenolysis. It also causes the conversion of proteins, amino acids and fats into glucose, which is known as gluconeogenesis. The overall effect is to increase the blood glucose concentration. Now we will take a brief look at the reproductive hormones. In males we have the testes and in the females we have the ovaries. These gonads produce important hormones without which reproduction is not possible. The male gonads, the testes, produce important hormones like testosterone, inhibin, antimullerian hormone and some other androgens like androstenedione and dihydrotestosterone. These hormones are essential for the formation of sperms and development of secondary sexual characters. On the other hand, we have the female gonads, the ovaries, which secrete two important hormones, the estrogens and the progesterones. The estrogens are of various types, most abundantly found in the females is the estradiol and also others like estrone and estriol. Estrogen causes the development of sex organs like uterus, fallopian tubes, vagina, cervix. It also causes the development of secondary sexual characters. Progesterone on the other hand mainly acts on the uterus, cervix and vagina and prepares these organs for conception of the zygote. It also affects metabolisms and also affects the body temperature. So we have all these endocrine glands all over the body that secrete these various hormones. But the secretion from these glands require control which is provided by two important endocrine glands located in your brain. The hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus is a small almond sized part of the brain that lies below the thalamus and controls a wide variety of body functions to maintain a proper body's internal environment. These functions include regulation of body temperature, hunger, sleep, thirst and many other things. Now, one of the most important things that the hypothalamus does is that it links the nervous system to the endocrine system through the pituitary gland. To understand this, we can compare the hypothalamus to a vital part of the brain that is able to sense the various conditions or processes that are going around in the body. Now it controls many aspects of the body through the autonomic nervous system, but it also controls the body's endocrine response through the pituitary gland secretions. So if we take a look at the pituitary gland, it is composed of an anterior lobe and a posterior lobe. And together they secrete about 8 hormones which either inhibit or stimulate secretions from other endocrine glands. The hypothalamus directly or indirectly controls the secretions from the pituitary gland. The posterior pituitary is simple. 
It does not secrete hormones from its own but in reality these hormones are actually synthesized in the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has two important collections of neurons known as the supraoptic and the paraventricular nucleus. The paraventricular nucleus secretes oxytocin whereas the supraoptic nucleus secretes vasopressin or the antidiuretic hormone. These axons of the neurons directly reach the posterior pituitary and secrete these hormones there. And then these hormones are released into the blood circulation and carried all over the body. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone that mainly acts on two important places in the body, the uterus and the breast. In the uterus, it causes powerful smooth muscle contractions which are essential for childbirth and in breast it is essential for lactation. Vasopressin, also known as the antidiuretic hormone, is also a peptide hormone. Vasopressin mainly acts on two important places, the kidneys and the blood vessels. In the kidneys, the vasopressin causes reabsorption of water and decreases the urine output. In the blood vessels, the vasopressin causes constriction of blood vessels, increases peripheral vascular resistance and thus increasing the blood pressure. So now when we take a look at the anterior pituitary, things are a bit different. The anterior lobe of pituitary produces six important hormones, the secretions of which are directly controlled by releasing or inhibiting hormones that are produced inside the hypothalamus. The hormones that are produced in the hypothalamus reach the pituitary through blood vessels. And in response to these releasing hormones, the pituitary gland then produces hormones that control the secretion of other endocrine glands. To take this into context, let's take the example when the hypothalamus releases the hormone thyrotropin releasing hormone or the TRH from the hypothalamus. It is carried to the pituitary through the blood vessels which causes the release of another hormone, the thyroid stimulating hormone from the pituitary. The TSH then acts on the thyroid gland and causes the release of important thyroid hormones. In a similar way, the hypothalamus releases CRH or the corticotropin releasing hormone which causes the release of ACTH from pituitary or the adrenocorticotropin hormone. The ACTH then acts on the adrenals causing the release of important adrenal hormones. Similarly, we have the gonadotropin releasing hormone or the GNRH. The GNRH acts on the pituitary causing the release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland. These hormones act on the gonads causing the release of sex hormones. Similarly, we have the growth hormone releasing hormone from the hypothalamus which causes the release of growth hormone from the pituitary gland. The growth hormone acts on almost all the cells of the body. Dopamine is released from the hypothalamus which inhibits the secretion of prolactin. The dopamine basically inhibits the release of prolactin from the pituitary gland. So this was a brief overview about the human endocrine system. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video and all the other free educational videos on this channel helpful, you can now support Med Simplified on patreon.com for literally the price of a coffee cup. This will allow me to fund my work and make more videos like this and will also unlock some cool Patreon only exclusive content like behind the scenes of these videos, upcoming videos, early notifications and exclusive flashcards and handouts. Make sure to subscribe us on YouTube for all the upcoming videos and also make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for flashcards, notifications and much more.